I'm going to demonstrate an Arduino-based DRO and manual pulse generator integrated with EMC. Uh, despite the mess of wires that you see here, it's actually a fairly simple circuit. Uh, just a handful of switches, an encoder, and a potentiometer to control the contrast on the display. Uh, the display is a simple LCD-based display from SparkFun, about a $20 unit. The encoder that you probably can't see very well is a Greyhill encoder. It's a 32-position detented encoder. Uh, it costs about $26. Uh, the Arduino I'm using is a uh, DSC Milla um, uh, board, which is one of the uh, slightly older ones. And uh, what we're going to show here is the use of the Arduino to interface with the MC and we're going to see three different things. It's going to be used as a manual pulse generator uh, for a hand wheel pendant type control. Uh, we're going to see output uh, to an LED and also uh, a remote DRO function. So you would imagine this uh, being all located in a handheld pendant so that you can uh, see and control the machine position away from the computer. Uh, we'll start here. Uh, if I zoom back out, um, we can see over here on EMC um, using the Axis display. We'll start by turning the machine on. And when we turn the machine on, you'll notice that that LED there has lit up. Uh, so you can see that we've got an output going through there. And uh, what we'll start by doing here is just exercise the uh, the machine a little bit by moving the uh, moving our uh, self around using the manual pulse generator. So to do that, I can use these switches here to select the axis, and you can see how the cursor moves uh, as I do that uh, to switch us between different axes. So I can select. Uh, any of my three axes there. We'll start with the X and as I turn this you'll notice that our DRO starts to move and uh, fortunately it lines up with what's on screen right there. And I could go through all three axes to show that it really works uh, but I will think you'll just take my word for it. What I'm going to do now is switch over to a program that I have uh, on the machine which is to actually etch a board that will uh, have a lot more switches and uh, basically turn this into more of a real uh, real piece of hardware and let me go and just give you a quick look at that so you can see it's a you know, not too complicated uh, PC board etching program um, and what we'll do here now I don't have this I do have a machine that you probably can't see very well over here. This is my uh, office area, so I have none of my big, messy, greasy uh, metalworking machine up here, but just a, a little tiny uh, Dremel router that can do PC boards and is good for testing things like this uh, to make sure it all really works with hardware. Uh, but for this kind of testing, just running it in uh, EMC is fine because we know if it runs here, it's going to work on a real machine. So to uh, get started, I'll just go ahead and hit the play button here. And as I do, we'll see things start to move there. And let's switch back over to the Arduino board. And we can see down here now that uh, as the program runs, we can uh, see all of the uh, numbers on the remote DRO change. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the pause button just at kind of a random moment there and if we take a look at our numbers there we can see that they do in fact match up well uh, pretty much exactly against the numbers on screen so we can see that the two uh, interfaces are being kept in sync with each other the uh, if we watch the uh, receive and transmit lights uh, on the Arduino board while this runs, you'll see this uh, the script behind this that feeds information to the Arduino uh, is set so that it updates the DRO about 10 times per second. 
uh, that's a compromise. We can run a little bit faster than that, but I've found that there is a trade-off that when you start going too fast, uh, the Arduino has a hard time keeping up with it. I, I think that's what it is anyway. It seems to freeze up. Uh, but at 10 times a second, it uh, seemed to hold position perfectly well, and uh, as far as a human being is concerned, that's probably more than frequently enough uh, to update it to keep up, uh, to make it uh, very useful. The some of the nice things about this setup, probably the really nice part, is that everything happens through that USB cable right there. So we've got a total of probably uh, seven or so uh, I/O uh, pins going through here from our three different axis selectors. Uh, to the two channels on our encoder, uh, as well as the uh, the machine on-off light uh, that's on there, and I'll actually turn the machine off, and we'll see that go off. Um, pretty neat to be able to click something on the screen and actually have it happen in the real world. Um, but uh, but basically, the nice thing about this, with it all going through the USB, we've uh, got a lot fewer cables uh, to worry about. We don't use up any of our uh, precious parallel port pins. Uh, so we can save those for things that uh, are actually really time sensitive. Um, I'll uh, be continuing to uh, post some updates and sample code uh, as I get this closer to uh, kind of a nicely tuned system. Uh, but at this point, it uh, you know seems to have very smooth motion. Um, I was a little worried with it being on a serial interface that. Uh, there might be some weird timing delays or other stuff, but at least so far it seems to work pretty well. Um, so that's uh, that's interfacing an Arduino with EMC and doing some pretty neat functionality, I think. Uh, hopefully in uh, the next few weeks we'll have uh, some more stuff to show. Thank you.